first tank getting filled up. So getting multiple things done in the fish room at the same time. Okay guys, so here we go. This is what I wasn't hoping for. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be preparing the three five foot aquariums. We're gonna be cleaning them up, filling them up and testing them for leaks. So let's get into this week's video. And there we go guys, the first tank getting filled up. Again, this is just to clean the aquariums, just to get any oils off the tanks. I'm gonna give them a bit of a wipe down once they're full of water. And just so I, again, if I pick up any debris, I'm not really scratching the glass. And I'm gonna try and siphon out as much of the dust uh, from the warehouse that these tanks were manufactured in, siphon that out and uh, fill them back up again. I've just got the hose on a light spray at the moment, just so it doesn't splash around. Once the um, water level gets a bit deeper, I'll put it onto its max uh, and I'll actually take off this spray nozzle attachment and just let the water flow into the tank unimpeded. These tanks, if you're uh, not sure if you noticed, they do not ha have lids. Lids are expensive uh, from tank manufacturers, so I'm going to be making my own so uh, that's why they, I, don't, I didn't order glass lids with these aquariums. So I'll be making my own, filling up the tank, first tank getting filled up for the very first time. And the main thing I'm filling them up for is to test the leaks. So I'm gonna fill them right up as high as I can get them without <laughs> overflowing them through the hole for the bulkhead. And yeah, hopefully we get no leaks. Should be fine. Fingers crossed uh, we don't have any leaks. Out of, when I got my original 20 tanks made um, from the manufacturer uh, on my sump system, there were two leaks out of the 20. And they were, luckily they were only on the two foot by one foot aquarium. So they were very easy to uh, silicon those leaks up. I don't want, I'm really hoping there isn't any leaks in these because obviously black silicon has been used. So the way I take this nozzle off is to crimp the hose, pull, back on the attachment the spray nozzle comes off and then decrimp the hose now water will flow out of this hose very quick a lot faster uh, without the spray nozzle on the spray nozzle does impede water flow but you can see it's not going crazy everywhere and splashing uh, about the place so uh, that's going to be fine so what I'll do when I want to fill up the next aquarium after this one's full, I'll uh, bring in another hose, start filling up that aquarium, and then I'll detach this hose from my outside tap and a siphon will start and that will just naturally start to drain the tank back out onto my garden. I don't put all this water down the drain, it is a waste, so I use this on my garden. You may as well, if you can do that, conserve some water, that'd be great. So I'm gonna be filling them up to about here. And as you can see now, I brought in my other hose. The tap is closed on this shower attachment. Uh, it's clamped to the aquarium. It's clamped to the aquarium properly now. <laughs> and uh, these yellow pads weren't touching the, the glass nice and uh, flush. Now it's it clamped down properly. We've got our shower attachment. It's in the lock position. Once this tank is full, I'm gonna swap the hoses over. I'll go outside. I'll close the tap of this hose disconnect this hose, go down into the garden, and water will start to drain out of this tank. A siphon will start. I'll then attach this hose to my tap and start filling this tank up. So getting multiple things done in the fish room uh, at the same time. The other thing I wanna point out, guys, is obviously everything's black on this aquarium. Uh, I am going to be putting black electrical tape in front of the styrofoam, so uh, you don't see the styrofoam, uh, the white styrofoam line. Putting some electrical tape or something in front of it is obviously going to protect it. When you're cleaning the glass of the aquarium, uh, you can sometimes knock off some of the styrofoam. It will break off um, and obviously the, the static build up with that. It sticks to everything and uh, you just can, can, you can make a mess in your fish room. So I'm going to be putting black electrical tape in front of it to protect it and to hide it because uh, I want everything to look nice and clean on these tanks. The next thing uh, is probably the elephant in the room. Some of you guys are probably wondering is you can see through the tanks. Am I gonna be painting these tanks black? At the moment, I'm not sure. Uh, I 
am leaning towards doing it. Uh, obviously, this stand is very heavy and these tanks are very heavy, so uh, it's going to take some time. I'm probably going to try and move the whole stand out with the tanks on it, <laughs> which sounds like a nightmare scenario. Uh, obviously, when they're empty and uh, then clean the backs of the outside of the tanks and then use a roller with some black paint to uh, paint them black, just so they're uniform across my fish room, every tank looks the same. That's what I really wanna do, but I am kinda like, oh, I can't be bothered. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. The uh, anxiety with filling up the tanks right now, I'm sure is similar to the anxiety the uh, scientists and astronomers around the world have been experiencing for the last uh, couple weeks with the James Webb telescope unfolding and in space unfurling its sun shield and uh, secondary mirror and primary mirror. Uh, the anxiety is on the exact same level as when I fill up these tanks. <laughs> so, yeah, nothing like that. But anyway. Okay, so I've stopped filling up this aquarium. The water is about half a centimetre away from overflowing over the bulkhead hole. And I'm going to switch the hoses over and start filling this aquarium up. So again, when I switch the hoses over, this aquarium is immediately going to start draining and this tank is going to start to fill up. So, water is draining out of this aquarium now and the water level is already noticeably lower, lower than the hole in the side of the tank for the bulkhead and I'm starting to fill this tank up. So getting multiple things done at the same time. Now what I'm going to do now is lower this hose into the aquarium and clamp it down again just so I can drain as much water out of this tank as possible. Yes, yes. Oh, what is he looking at? I wonder what that could be. Hmm, yes. Yes, that doesn't look too good. Uh, I think I'll just ignore it. Pretend it's not happening. Hmm, no, uh, yeah, that is happening. Yeah, I think I should do something about that. Yes. Yes. Uh. Yep, it's still there. <laughs> okay. Okay, guys, so here we go. This is what I wasn't hoping for. We do have a leak in the aquarium. Yep, it leaks. Yeah, it leaks. It leaks, definitely leaks. Go in the water, is coming out the bottom, it's leaking. Leaks. So I'm seeing water building up on the surface of the styrofoam underneath the aquarium. So the leak is somewhere here. Not good, I would have preferred it, say, if a leak was at the back of the tank, uh, not at the front. Now, I can't just simply turn this uh, aquarium around because I want all the plumbing on this side of the aquarium. So they're only drilled on the right-hand side of the tanks. So this is going to have to be the, the front of the aquarium, regardless of what I do. So we've got a leak and I'm gonna have to fix that. Now I've got silicon here, so it's not a problem. Uh, I just didn't want to have to use silicon on these tanks because they're black silicon. Uh, so hopefully I'll be able to fix that relatively easy. I can see water slowly dripping out from approximately here, which makes sense because the spread of water underneath the aquarium is going this way. So around the middle here, there's a little hole obviously in the silicon. So what I'll do is I'm going to drain this tank now. I'm going to stop filling up this tank drain it out. Uh, I'm going to mark where I think approximately the hole is and I'll put a bead of silicon along there. But hopefully the top tank doesn't have that problem and I'll be able to put fish in there because I really want to start to use these aquariums as soon as possible. So that's going to be a little bit of a setback but it's all right. It's not a major issue because again I've got silicon on hand ready to go. The unfortunate thing is I'm not going to fill up the aquarium all the way because that will just add more pressure to the hole, to the leak and more water will leak out onto my fish room floor. So I'm gonna to have to start siphoning this aquarium out straight away. But there you go, that's why we do these tests. So what I'm gonna do here is, crimp this hose. Put it in here. Get this tank to start siphoning out. And, I'll clamp this hose down. So this tank, the hose is clamped down, water's coming out of this tank now, the siphon's continuing on this tank, I can leave this tank for the time being. 
So what I'm gonna do now is start to fill the top tank. Okay, so just to show you guys, this tank, I started draining out. You can see it's frosted over a bit because it's humid in the fish room and the water in this aquarium is coming straight out of my tap and it's a lot colder. So that's why it's frosted over. But if we remove some of that kind of uh, frosty appearance, you can see the styrofoam, it looks like a mirror. You get a mirror image. You know there's no leaks in this aquarium. However, when we look at this aquarium, you can see how different it looks underneath. And this is indicating where the leaks are. So what I'm gonna do, you can see there's water even pooling here. So we might have potentially two leaks at the front of the aquarium. You can see how much water has gotten underneath the styrofoam, even though the leak is potentially just from here. So what I'll do is, I'll run a bead of silicon all the way along this, just to be sure. Bit unfortunate, but it's not really that big of an issue. Because again, we haven't filled up the tanks uh, all the way and it's just a bit of water underneath the aquarium. Just going to take a little bit more time to get these ones prepared. So I'm filling up the top tank. You can see the mirror image. It just looks like a mirror. That's indicating that there's no leaks. If there was leaks, you wouldn't get that, that mirror image look. So like see here, you can see it's like a mirror. And then all of a sudden, you can see the styrofoam indicating there's leaks. This top tank, I'm a little bit nervous about it now. Uh, it's going good so far. Okay guys, so for this next bit, to get the last remaining bit of water out of this aquarium, you can't do it with a thick hose. Uh, because the siphon will keep breaking. So I'm simply going to use airline hose. You're going to want to use a bucket as well. So biggest bucket as you can get. And I'm going to be clamping this airline hose to the bucket. But what I want to do first is start a siphon. Okay. Now the siphon has started. I'm just going to ensure that that airline hose is in a position where the siphon will not break because I want to get as much water out of the tank as possible. And obviously this is going to take a little bit more time because it's a smaller hose, but there's no other way to get the water out of this tank other than using, say, a towel or a shot vac. Uh, and I don't really want to use a towel just yet, and I don't have a shot vac, which I probably should get because it is handy in the fish room, especially if you ever get uh, big leaks, big flooding events in your fish room. Over. So with this, if you don't have any of those things, just a simple airline hose going into a bucket and you'll drain the majority of the remaining water in this aquarium. Once this tank is completely drained, as drained as I can get it, with the airline hose siphon breaking, I will then use a towel to completely dry this. I'll let the, the tank dry maybe for about 24 hours in the fish room and then I'll silicon over the leaks. Let that silicon cure for about a week. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to wait and then I'll fill the tank back up. But all good, we're able to deal with that. Uh, you need to know how to fix leaks in aquariums if you intend to run a fish room. Always have some silicon on hand. Okay, so I've closed the tap, taken the hose off the tap, and this aquarium is now draining into the garden. This tank is almost all the way empty. The airline hose is still working. The, uh, the siphon is still going. Got about an inch of water in the bucket. So there was quite a bit of water remaining in this aquarium and they're still going. So there is, um, I'm gonna let that go. And this aquarium, the bottom tank is uh, still draining as well to the garden. Okay guys, so this tank is pretty much uh, empty. The other thing I'm going to do though, is I'm gonna shift this aquarium from the middle row onto the bottom row and bring the bottom row tank up to the middle row. That way I can still continue working on these tanks, getting them ready for uh, th to be plumbed into my sump system. And I don't have to wait for the, a week for that silicon to dry in this tank uh, because that's gonna delay me a week and I don't wanna have to uh, deal with that. So because of that, I'll just move this tank up here because it's perfect, it doesn't leak. So I'm gonna continue with my project to connect these uh, the tank on the top row and the tank on the middle row to the sump system. And then while uh, that's all happening, again, we're doing multiple things in the fish room at the same time. This tank will be drying on the bottom shelf and then I can silicon that. And it can just sit there for however long. It doesn't, uh, won't uh, be an issue for me because I won't, again, I don't intend on using the bottom tank for a number of weeks or months. 
until I connect it up to the sump system, unless I do run it on a canister filter. But anyway, so I'm gonna have to shift, swap these two tanks around, and then uh, we're gonna dry it out, and happy days, we should be right to go to continue on with my intended uh, project, which was to connect the top tank and the middle tank to the sump system. So this won't impede my progress. So let's see if it leaks. It was leaking from around here last time. I put more silicon here than the rest of the tank. Doesn't look great, <laughs> but uh, I want it to work rather than look pretty. And the tank's on the bottom row, so you're not really gonna notice it that much down there. Just really hope that it's sealed. Again, but even if it isn't sealed, I've got more than enough time to just drain this tank back out to the garden let it dry and silicon it back up because I don't intend to use the bottom tank for a number of months until the sump system is set up on this rack. So guys, it was around this point where I noticed uh, the tank was leaking. And so far with this fill, it's going well. Not noticing any leaks. Again, I can just see uh, the bottom of the tank looks like a mirror, which is what you want to see through the front pane of glass. If we start to see the styrofoam through the front pane of glass, where the water is, uh, where we'll see uh, leak. that means that the, that the tank is leaking like you saw earlier in the video. So I'm glad I didn't use black silicon on the tank because if I did, then my repair job would look horrible. Uh, so I've gone ahead and used the clear uh, silicon for my repair job even though this tank has black silicon uh, on all the joins. Guys, this filling is going really well. There are absolutely no leaks so far, but Pressure could change the deeper we go, the more we fill this tank up with more water, it's more weight on the bottom pane of glass, more weight on all the joins, and then a leak could develop. So we're gonna fill it all the way to the bottom of the bulkhead and uh, see how it holds. So I finished the test. I filled the tank to the bottom of the bulkhead and you can see the bulkhead on the right hand side here. Uh, if I fill it, the tank up anymore, the water will just simply overflow out of the bulkhead and onto the fish room floor. So that's why I've stopped the test here. Uh, when the tank is on, in operation and, and connected to the sump uh, in a few months time, the water level will be about two inches, maybe even three inches deeper than you see here. Uh, and then that it will flow over the bulkhead and into the sump. However, anyway, so the tank is now fixed. There's no more leaks. Uh, it looks like, it looks like there's a leak there and uh, here, but it's actually condensation that's formed underneath the tank. This water is quite cold, it's about 10 degrees coming from my outside tap and the fish room is at 28 degrees. So uh, that's why there's condensation forming on all panes of glass. And that's why it actually looks like there's a leak there. And that concerned me when I first saw it, I'm like, oh no, it is actually leaking again, but in a different spot, but it isn't, it's completely fine. The test is a success. So. I'm going to start to drain this tank now out to the garden uh, because like I said, um, I'm not going to be using this tank for a number of months now. So guys, the tank's pretty much empty. There's just a little bit of water left to go. So I'm just going to finish the siphon now. And yeah, I'm really happy with the result. So there you have it guys, testing the brand new tanks. And as you saw, one out of the three did develop a leak, but that was easily fixed up. Anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment, and consider subscribing to the channel. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.